nearly £2,000. Hey everyone, I was going through my bags a couple of days ago because I've sold quite a few in the last year. Just bags that I've bought over the last couple of years that I haven't really worn or really used actually that much. And it's not that they are bad bags, it's just that they are ones that I haven't reached for so much. And I've got here five bags, like five of my top bags, which have been, do I say worst purchase? It's not that they're the worst purchases, it's that, I don't even know how to describe this. I'm just going to start this video and then we'll decide as we go on as to what it is that I'm saying here. Let's start with Valentino. I, I feel conflicted with Valentino because they're one brand and I've bought quite a few bags from there that actually I have sold recently and I'm thinking about selling this one. This to me, I wish I could take that off because I, I think if I could take that off it would feel less dated and also that, and I, when I used to use this bag, actually I can take that off. Oh, okay, that changes everything. When I, f I first bought this bag in 2018, and the thing I find with Valentino, and I don't know how many of you feel the same, but in retrospect, they're not a brand that seem to have iconic bags. And also I feel like from time to time, their logo changes very slightly. And you know, I've spoken before about brands that do that, like Dior's one that have done that a few times where the logo has changed very slightly over the years. And I've got a belt from about four years ago when the logo was that bronze. How many of you remember this logo? It was kind of bronze and the letters were all condensed and I have a belt from back then. And since the logo has changed a couple of times since that, I still wear the belt, but it, I kind of look at it and it feels a bit dated. And I feel that that's what happens with Valentino. The shape of this, now I know that I can remove this top handle, the shape of this is actually very classic in that it's just a flap bag, but it's one that I don't go for. And it's one that was actually quite expensive, although I bought it for a significant discount on Luisa Via Roma, and this was back in 2018. So for me, this is one of my, it's kind of one of my worst bags. I enjoyed it immensely for about six months when I first bought it, and then I kind of went off it. What do you think? I think that this doesn't help. And then I also have a couple from Louis Vuitton, and I want to say that with some of these, I want to sell them, and with others I don't, but there is a reason why I think that they are kind of like the worst bags now that I'll explain. This is the other one, which I've spoken about this before, and the, this is the My Lock Me from Louis Vuitton, and there are a couple of things about it that mean I don't use it that much. The first thing is the hardware. The hardware I find on Louis Vuitton, whether it's gold or silver, it's very soft, and it scratches up really quickly and really quite badly. And I've got Spring Street, you know that bag? I bought that end of last year, and I end up now leaving the protective film over it that it comes with, just because I think I don't want it to scratch up. And one of the things I found with this bag, and I think will also happen with Spring Street, is that the bag's own opening and closing scratches the hardware. So even if you're really, really careful, that hardware, as far as I'm concerned, shouldn't scratch. And on this bag, the logo on the front of it is, is pretty beaten up, and I, I haven't used this bag that much. The other thing I find with it as well is that it doesn't hold its shape that well. It's one of those bags that it, fe it feels a bit cheap, actually, if I'm honest. Um, and I don't know whether that's because it doesn't hold its shape very well and the scratching of the um, of the hardware, but it doesn't feel the price that it was. And on top of that, I know some of you might be thinking, well, if, if these things are the case, why did you buy it? It's very often with this kind of stuff, and I don't know how many of you feel the same way, or you might disagree altogether, but, Sometimes you buy things and it's not until you start using them that you realise the things that end up annoying you. And what I'm talking about with this bag, how it just condenses into nothing. 
it's kind of a bit like this. I wish I could demo it better. It just, if you don't have anything in it, it doesn't hold its shape at all. So when I store this, I have to really stuff it with, um, you know, I get those charcoal sort of cushion things on Amazon. But even if you want to close it, it kind of goes in on itself. Can you see that? It collapses in on itself. However, with that one, I wouldn't sell it because I bought it when I went skiing with one of my best friends and I bought it at the beginning of 2019 and it's got so much sentimental value. I don't dislike the shape of it. I just dislike the fragility of it and the fact that the leather is so supple that it doesn't hold together. They're the things that I don't like about it. The next one, which is kind of, this is, this, is and isn't my worst bag. This is the Louis Vuitton can. Do you know why I'm including this in this video is because it's a bag that I love, I use a lot. I live in the UK, it's always raining. And the great thing, one thing I do like about the canvas is that you can use it in the rain, it doesn't damage. I think if you get the version where the leather trim is the pale colour. I think that in the rain, from what I've seen, that can stain a bit, but on this where the leather is that kind of darker colour, um, it's okay. The reason why I'm including this is because like a few other bags I'm going to talk about, this is a worst bag from the point of view of how much it is because there is zero way that this is worth its new price. I know that Louis Vuitton had price rise a couple of weeks ago. This bag is now well over £2,000 and in fact if you get it in the patent version that is like 2300 and for canvas there is no way this is worth that money. When I bought it it was a lot but I bought it because I wanted it for a long time. I like the quirky shape of it but now it's no way worth that price. Two more and these are another well one functionally is fine the one I'm about to show you functionally is annoying and I've told you about it before but for anyone who hasn't seen and if you're into this bag you might be interested to know and it's the Bottega Jody. This bag nearly £2,000. How is this bag worth that? When I bought this you're going to be surprised at how much I paid and that's why I'm glad I've got it and I would like never pay the new price. I paid £590 for this bag because when I bought it, it was at the original price of £1,025, which is way nearer the mark of what I think it's worth. But I bought it on Louisa Via Roma and I had saved up credits. So by the time I'd used those, that was why I got it for £590. And for £590, I'm really happy with it. This is one of those bags that I think is absolutely a trend. And I bought it knowing that the the functionality problems with it are the zip opening and closing when you get this bag I'm, so it's open at the moment okay there we go it is really difficult to open and close to the point where when I use this I don't actually close the bag and because the bag is sort of valley shaped like that it's and, it, and it's quite shallow depending on how much you carry around your stuff spills out over the top so easily when I've used this on an evening out so I used this a um, couple of months ago this bag and I had it open I'd gone out for an evening and my phone had like wiggled its way to the top and was balanced across the top and luckily one of my friends was like you're about to lose your phone there and so I zipped it up but it's a bag that's so hard to get in and out of that when I do use it it's quite an irritation but I love the way it looks. This bag is in my top worst because of the price. It is now 1,700 and something pounds. It's easily going to hit 2,000 and for me I don't think it's worth it. And then the final worst, which is only worse because, and I keep telling you, it's worse because of the pro the ludicrous price of this, which is the Chanel, well, any of the Chanel flap bags are now crazy money, if you ask me. This is the Jumbo and it's over 7,000 pounds and there is no way that this bag is worth over 7,000. It's a gorgeous bag. This I bought back in 2016 for 4,500 
which felt like an awful lot at the time, but now it's drop in the ocean, consider how much this is. Functionally, it's fine. Uh, if you can get on with the flap on the inside, can be annoying, but the more you use the bag, the more that supples up and then the easier that gets. My bag's still really new, so it's all, like when you open it, it's a struggle to kind of get in and out a bit really, but that's fine. Quality of the bag's good, but it's not worth that price. And if you want this bag or any of the sizes, but you've seen the prices and you're like, no way, um, can I suggest you go pre-loved? Pre-loved is different to vintage. You know I really like vintage, but if you don't like vintage, pre-loved is, could be this. Something next to new, where the person's just decided to sell it. You can actually pick up the jumbos at the moment on the likes of Vest Air Collective and Luxury Promise. They're around about four and a half thousand pounds. They're the price that I paid for this. So actually, the price of this bag hitting 7,000 plus from an investment point of view, this is tanked. You know, with Chanel, with some of the lower priced items, you can make a you can make a profit if you decide to ever sell them. But with this, this is making a big loss, a really big loss at the moment. So they are my bags that for me are my top bags. And also that classic flap because of the price of it. I don't use it because I'm worried about damaging the thing. So when I was cleaning out my bags, these are the ones that I came up against and I was like, oh, I like you, but I don't use you that often. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you found this interesting, if nothing else. And I will see you in the next video.